Good afternoon. This is Between the Lines live at SanduskyRegister.com. I'm Matt Westerholm, managing editor of the Register, and my guests today are from Project Lifesaver. We're going to learn all about that in just a few minutes, but uh, and I'll introduce our guests in just a few minutes. But before I do that, I want to mention that Between the Lines is brought to you by Serving Our Seniors for Erie County residents age 60 and better. If you need help, call Serving Our Seniors at 419-624-1856. Aaron Caldwell is here today producing this segment of Between the Lines. Aaron, do you want to say hello? Hello. And community editor Brandon Adio is in the audience, along with, I'd say, about 200 other people. And we'll get started. Uh, I, th I think that's it for all the housekeeping. So let's get started. Introduce our guest on the right side of the camera, I guess. Right side of your screen is Sheriff uh, Paul Sixworth, Erie County Sheriff Paul Sixworth, also known as Bob Eubanks occasionally. Right. right. And in the center is Pam Straziuso. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. I'm proud of you. Uh, Pam is the um, Project Lifesaver Coordinator. Secretary. Secretary uh, for the Sandusky Lions. This is a Erie County Lions project. We're going to learn all about that in just a moment. And on the far end is uh, Deputy Ron Schnicker, S-C-H-N-I-T-T-K-E-R. Is that right? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the Project Lifesaver Coordinator for the Erie County Sheriff's Office? What is Project Lifesaver? Who wants to take that? So Project Lifesaver, Matt, is a program designed to utilize technology around. It's going to uh, demonstrate that for us in a little bit. To assist in the location of individuals with cognitive disorders, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, autism, who have a tendency to wander from their homes or from their caregivers. Um, which can create huge anxiety for families. Well, of course, and, and it can create a huge anxiety for the families. It's also very difficult at times to find someone uh, with those disorders who has water because they have, in many cases, in the winter, you know, it could be zero degrees. Um, in the summer, it could be 90 degrees. Uh, they have a lot of, perhaps a lot of health issues, and they do not have any cognition of the danger that they may, in, may be in by wandering. And the other intangible, and you mentioned it, not only does this give public safety agencies an opportunity to find these folks, hopefully very quickly, before harm may uh, come to them, but it also gives their caregivers um, a level of safety and security where they know that they can call if their loved one does wander and we can find them fairly quickly, hopefully very quickly. Um, I can't imagine, I mean, I'm a parent, if you lose your child for more than 30 seconds, you know, there's almost a, a sense of panic. And you can imagine a caregiver who has their elderly mom or dad there, and they're trying to do the best with, for them that they can so they don't have to put them in an assisted living facility. They want, to, they want them to stay at home. They want to take care of them. You can imagine what they would go through if, if their loved one wanders. And some of these folks do wander, and they try to wander fairly regularly because of their disorder. So this is a way to give those individuals um, a level of security, knowing that you know maybe uh, we can help them find their loved one if they do want it. Before, before something terrible happens. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and around here, standing cornfields, all kinds of bodies of water, um, all kinds of dangers that can be presented if a loved one does wander um, any time of the day or night. So. And uh, Pam, how did you become, how is the Lions so how did you uh, do that? Well, back in 2013, Sheriff Paul, he came to us and um, he asked us if we would be willing to, if our organization would be willing to assist them. They cannot raise their own money. Um, they could not do this whole program by themselves, so they need assistance. So they came to Snusky Lions, and Snusky Lions said, eh, we can't do this all by ourselves, so we gathered all the other Erie County Lions clubs um, that would be here in Castalia. Um, Vermilion, Milan, and then Sandusky. So we gathered them all together and um, we have become their assistants. We raise their money for them, we 
do their pamphlets, pamphlets or their brochures for them. Uh, that, that's to take to a family? And yes, we take it to a family. Or... We put them in doctor's offices um, and other places around the county um, where people can, can get them and find out what the program is about. Um, we are in charge of sending out the statements to the parents or, or the caregivers for the um, money that they would owe for the year. Um, and we take care, I work very closely with Ron to do the contracts and the interviews of the clients. So we try to, these guys have a lot to do, so we try to help them out as much as we can. Okay, and Lions Club is a service organization. We are a service nonprofit organization around the world. And service means you you're, you do good deeds. Yes, we do things for the community. Anytime we have a fundraiser that we do something, that money goes back into the community. In some yes, um, our the Lions Club main project is glasses. Um, it has been. It has, has been years. since about yes, yeah, since about 1925. <laughs> so um, yes, that's our main project, our glasses, and then we do a lot of other things. Um, during Christmas, we have service projects. Um, we give food out to families in need. Um, we give gifts out to kids um, that are also in need, so we do other things throughout the year. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that when you say glasses, mm -hmm. you're talking about providing glasses to people who yes. need glasses yes. who otherwise wouldn't have glasses. Yes. Um, they call us. We do an interview. Um, they have to meet certain standards. Um, you know, we're not going to give a pair of glasses to someone who uh, earns way too much money. Right. So we give to the low-income families. So once they have um, done their um, interview with us, then they are usually sent to Dr. Parshower's office, and um, they get their glasses for nothing. That we do not and charge. The them. Lions Club does this all <laughs> over the world. Yes. Yes. Uh, and so the reason I point that out is because. Some people say, well, glasses, what are you, you just go get glasses. It's not like that for no, it's everybody. it's not like that. And then we provide also, we collect used glasses. If you go into Walmart, you'll see a big box. That's right. And we collect used glasses, and then those go around the world. Which are redistributed, yes. reused, and yes. put to good use yes. for people all over the world. And yes. that is what a service organization does. Yes. They, they do good deeds across the planet. Yes. And I love that. Uh, Deputy, what, uh, tell me about what you do. With so, Project when the program started in 2013, I got involved later in the year when it came down to the training time. And at the time, there was just two deputies, myself and another deputy. And we were responsible to go ahead and do the battery changes once we got a client enrolled in the program. And at that time, we were doing them like every 30 days. And about a year after that, we were up and running, the other deputy had retired. So instead of me being able to do it myself, I was actually uh, able to train the trainee. So I was actually able to bring in new members from our agency, Sandusky Police Department, Perkins Township Police Department, and Milan Police Department. And we got some more members on board to help out with the program. Um, and we had since then uh, expanded the um, program a little bit and we're involved with the Alzheimer's Foundation of America. Um, I go around with Pam usually and we do talks to different organizations. We have a meeting coming up next month with the uh, uh, Board of uh, Disabilities and Developmental Issues and then um, pretty much we just try to get the word out uh, and like Pam said we go around we do all the interviews for all our potential clients and if it's outside the Sandusky area where there's another area such as, say, Vermilion area, then we'll take a line member from there and we go out and do the interview and get the, the client enrolled. And then obviously anytime somebody does wander, I'm usually the first one called and then we go out with our equipment and we try to search and for so the person. Show us the equipment. Okay, so when the program started, they came up with this little transmitter. And I don't know if you're able to zoom in close enough. There's a, at the top there, there's a number with a 216 decimal. And that is actually a radio frequency. And that's what we actually utilize. So each of our clients that we have has their own frequency assigned to them. So when we're actually looking for the client, in essence, we're looking for the transmitter. Um, so what we do is we use that and we enclose it inside of a case and they have the band here and they can either wear it on their wrist or their ankle. 
Um, we actually have, or did have, a client that was in our program for a while who had skin sensitivity issues. And we ended up lacing it up in his shoes. So sometimes you got to get a little innovative Creative. with that. Correct. So we do that, and then um, that's actually the equipment itself. And then what I have here is we have two different styles of receivers. This particular receiver is called a PLI 3000. And there's a little one that's a little bit bigger. Uh, the only difference is, like for this one, the speaker that we hear the sound out of is coming off the top. The other one we have is a little bit bigger, and the speaker's on the bottom. It's up to each officer or deputy that is in the program, whichever one they feel more comfortable utilizing. So when we actually utilize the equipment, and I had already preset this, but there's an area here where we can set the frequency for that. Based on the number. Based on the number that, on that radio frequency, and then when we turn it on, if she's able to hear that, you'll hear a, a little chirping going on. That chirping is the actual band there that I just showed you with that transmitter. So the farther away our client or transmitter is, the weaker the signal, and it's a very hard signal to hear. As we get closer, then it becomes louder, and what we start out is like a wide range, and as we get closer, we can actually narrow in the range and find the person so relatively quickly. Do you have a number quickly. of these? Um... Uh, we actually, this is the only one of this style that we have. Uh, we actually have five or six other ones that we use. Uh, some so of our like, deputies... Are you able to drag them? Correct. Or? So, um, some of the deputies keep them, one with them. They're assigned to keep that with them. And then we keep a couple on station for like Sandusky or Perkins to use. And then what we would do is uh, we get a call for a missing client. We go out to where they were last seen and we will start from that. And we'll take the receiver and we'll start and do like a 360 turn to try to see if we can get a signal. If we get a real faint signal, we'll get a direction, and I'll tell the next guy, I'll say, you know, it's a weak signal, maybe go to such and such an area and see if you get a signal there. And then from there, we kind of start honing in until we can actually locate that person. Average time is less than 30 minutes. That you're able to find someone. Right, once they've left. Because the, the families know that this is a potential problem. So right. It's, it's not like, you know, they wake up on Thursday and say, has anybody seen Grandpa? Right. Right. Uh, you know, because they know Grandpa could, you know, so they, they wake up Thursday morning and they right. saw him last night when right. he went to bed. So the time frame is limited. So right. families are prepared. Yeah, so what we do happen. is when we go out, we instruct the families that they've got to pretty much be with that person 24-7. And if they notice that they're missing, make a quick sweep of the house or wherever you're at. If you can't find them, just call 911. I can imagine that that does like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. So how many clients do you have in Erie County? Do you know? Uh, we just enrolled one this morning, uh -huh. a little kiddo, 10 years old. Um, so that brings our count right now to 29. 29. Within sure. Erie County. And we usually average between 25 and 30 clients. And, and how often do you get called? It's a hit and a miss. Uh, we might get five or six. Uh, sometimes the family go forward with it. Other times the family says, well, maybe we'll hold off and wait a little bit. So it's, it's a hit and a miss. Now, I've been in, in this business uh, for, I started out as a cops reporter. So I do remember the calls where people went missing and it ended in tragedies. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about how this makes a difference for the sheriff's office being able to and families being able to avoid uh, that kind of tragedy. Well again, it allows us to immediately start to search for these folks, and if, especially if you have somebody in a rural area that um, has, has wandered, they, could, they can travel very, very quickly. Just because somebody has a cognitive disorder doesn't mean they're physically disabled. And a lot of the folks, um, they are living in the past and they believe that they need to get back to their house. So perhaps they live in Perkins Township, their childhood home is in Bellevue. God, I and, hope that doesn't happen to me. And, they're, and, and, I can see it and, 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 and they are hell-bent on getting back to Bellevue because that's, that's where in their mind they live. And so you can imagine if it's 10 degrees outside or if it's 90, like I said, they really have no understanding of how cold it is, how hot it is, they certainly aren't worried about taking their medications if they need it. So time is of the essence. And we have had those tragedies, like you said, where 
um, they have wandered and maybe they didn't weren't notice missing until the next morning uh -huh. and unfortunately they're found and they're found either very badly injured in very bad shape or they're deceased because of their exposure to the elements so we want to avoid that and again and, it's and it, there were those stories oh, I sure there have been. remember those sure. stories sure and you know it comes back to you know and I remember when we talked about this and we've talked about this over the years mm -hmm. several times so it's been about 10 years it's going on 10 years yeah um, Pam, how does how does someone who might want to utilize the service, how do they go about uh, getting in contact with you or with Deputy Snicker? Um, in our brochure, a lot of them get the names. Uh, there are names and phone numbers of people they can contact. Um, a lot of people will just call the sheriff's office and tell them, hey, this is what I need. Um, sometimes they are referred by doctors, right. sometimes they are referred by an actual police officer or, or a deputy who has found the person because they've been called because they've wandered. So um, those, the officers are very good at you know, giving them a brochure or telling them, uh, you got to call Pam or you got to call Ron and they'll give them our numbers or they'll give them a brochure and say, here, call these people. Very good, very yes. good. And if I can, while, while I'm talking, um, the money. Um, the program itself costs $60 a year. And that is to maintain the bands and batteries. Like Ron said, those get changed every 45 to 60 days. Um, we also purchase anything that they need. Uh, when he orders those bands and batteries, and um, if he orders the transmitter itself, those run what about 300, 350? 350. About 350 right now, and you know, inflation prices are going up, so those are going up. We do not charge. We do not charge the client for that. We only charge them a maintenance fee. Um, the rest of it comes from the money that we get from sponsors or that we earn. Also, if the person, the family, is on Medicaid. The program is free, and that is paid for by um, Erie County Project Lifesaver. Okay. That is paid for. And by if people want more information about the Lions Club in Sandusky, yes. How do they get in touch with? The um, Lions Club? they can call our president, um, Rachel Malone. She works for the board of DD. She can call um, myself. Uh, my husband is very. John is very involved in the Lions Club, so they can do that. Um, those would probably be the two top people. And there's a Lions Club in Sandusky, Huron, Castalia, Milan, and Vermilion. Yes. Uh, so, and you, you also are, you work together. As yes, we do. They are, there is at least one or two members from each Lions Club on our board that sits on our board. Their numbers, uh, the president or whoever wanted to be in the brochure, their phone number is in here, the, the Lions um, person. And um, we also have on our board, we have a board of DD person, we have a um, serving our seniors person, and children's services. Children's services, and we also have um, Dep or Sheriff Paul and Sheriff um, Ron, and then um, another sheriff, or another deputy, yes. Very good, and there's a, a park on the west end of Sandusky. Yes, there is. Called Lions Park. Yes. And why is it called Lions Park? Well, because at one time we owned it. Um, and um, George was his first name, and I unfortunately do not remember his last name. And Mr. Miley? No, it was George. another, I, think, I believe it was another George. But um, he got with the city, and the city promised to take care of it and to keep the name. So and we so still do a lot there. It's a waterfront um, park. It's a waterfront park. We still, we help clean it. Um, I think we have weekly cleanings. And um, we did help um, several years ago. We helped to pay for and put in the sign that's up front. Mm -hmm. And we did the landscaping around it. Um, we did that personally. We got lions out there and did that. I love Lions Park. It's yes. beautiful. Yes. Uh, the waterfront I like to call Waddington Beach because yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, Dave Waddington was yes. a real advocate for the, the mm -hmm. city's Lions yes. Park. Um, and do you know when Lions <sighs> donated it? I think it was. In I the used 50s. to years ago. I was just going to say. I think it was in the 40s or the 50s. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then there is um, Lions Club has a free little library down there too. 
Okay. We yeah. were yeah we were asked by the Snusky Library to so to put one down there so we keep it stocked. And there's these sculptures down there. I think there's at yes, least two or those three. are nice that the city puts down there. Yes. The uh, the overhead sculptures they're mm -hmm. really beautiful. Yes. Uh, but Lions Park is a great place to visit. Yes. Is there anything else we should cover? Did we cover it all? Pretty much for the most part. And again, as far as contacts, uh, they can call the sheriff's office, Pam's number. Um, on the Erie County Sheriff's website. On the left hand side there's a tab for Project Lifesaver and it's got PAMS and my information in it. Um, through the Erie County Lions Club Project Lifesaver Facebook page. It's on there for social media so okay. any of those uh, And the are website, available. what is it? We always tell people just type in a search engine, Erie County, Ohio Sheriff. Okay. Take you right to So you don't know the exact thing? I don't. <laughs> 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 and you were you were recently at the Erie County Fair. I was. Uh, that was fun, huh? The it Erie, was. The Erie County. It was. Yeah, the Oldie Weds County. game. The Oldie Weds game. <laughs> right. And Carol Merrill was there. Yep. I heard she was a big hit. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there were several people that were big hits down there. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You were Bob Eubank, Sheriff Eubank. Eubank. That's correct. And you asking had, the questions. You asking the questions. That was a lot of fun. You won, didn't you? We didn't win. We did not win. I thought you got the free house. Well, we took the free house, That's right. but we didn't win. We really didn't win. Okay. I mean, we only got one question. Well, who won the $50,000 cash? That was the other prize, right? You know, I wasn't going to fight <laughs> over it. But that was the senior fest at the Erie County <laughs> Fair, and that was a lot of fun. And, and we do that every year. Did we do it last year? We didn't do it last Things year. were, um, a lot of things were suspended because of COVID, so. And for the Erie County uh, uh, serving our seniors, mm -hmm. and I think the spring show is coming back in the spring of next year, after a three-year oh, yeah. Ron said he's going to be part of that. Are you? <laughs> Are you? As long as Me? you guys both no. dance. <laughs> no, I just did my time. No, don't be sorry. Uh, Sue Doherty is the uh, director of serving our seniors, and if she asks, you will serve. I probably will. Uh, that's it. Thank you for being on Between the Lines. Thank, Thank you, you for working this project. I know it's really important to families, and I know what a success it's been in talking to you through the years and just recalling, you know, the the tragedies yes. that happened. Before this was instituted, we just had an incident within the last month down in Florence Township where a gentleman wandered off and was found um, in a water filled ditch mm. the next morning and he had to be hospitalized. Yeah. yeah. And, and he is um, he's I, actually in our program. He's now in the program. Yeah. 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 And he was, he was uh, in, the, in the early stage of either dementia or Alzheimer's. Yeah. 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 And that's what this is all about. So Absolutely. thank you so much for thank being you. on the program. Uh, it's good to see all of you. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron.